Chapter 13 I push through the thickets and dart to the clinic, making sure no one is around along the way. It's the most reckless I have ever been, but it is the fastest my monitor has beeped. Sliding through the door to the emergency reload dispenser, I scan my wrist and out pops two tiny clear pills. I lean my head back, throw the remedy in my mouth, and swallow. Within a few seconds, the beeping on my monitor fades, and the yellow light stops blinking. All is well again. Closing my eyes, I replay the scene with Gavin. I don't know what to make of it, or why he moved so quickly between discussing the feelings game and my future. It's not his future that will be determined tomorrow, but he acts as though it is. Maybe he wanted to tell me about his future's ceremony. I wish we left tonight on a better note. This could be our last visit together, and I hate that it was cut short. If I'm an unpaired, it'll be fine. I'm sure I can sneak out to see Gavin still. If I'm paired, it'll be the end of my daily visits with him. Preparing to leave, I then remember the hoodie I left behind, so I go to the counter door and unlock it. The hoodie is on the floor, stuffed in the corner of the lost and found box. I must have dropped it when I ran out of the office after hearing Dr. Bourdine's call. Grabbing it, I turn around to leave when I notice a bright red envelope on the floor, poking out from under the doctor's door. Red envelopes are restricted for use by most people in impetus, since they signify official community business, only for the eyes of current elders board members. Technically, no one else should touch them. Staying as far away as possible is wise. All of this, I know. Impetus has told us many things over the years that aren't true. I once could justify their lies, that the noble purpose is to keep us safe and prevent us from making mistakes of the before. I'm not sure that's the whole story anymore. All these recent conversations... The ones I've overheard and the ones with Gavin. They're all too much to comprehend. There are too many secrets. As a new chapter in my life is about to begin, I need answers more than ever before. Gavin has proven he won't tell me what he doesn't need to. I realize it's up to me to figure it out. Cautiously walking to the doctor's office, I consider whether my next actions are worth potential consequences. I've broken the rules a lot, but this may be the worst. But I know the truth. Not yet, but I'm determined to find out. I knock on Dr. Bourdine's office. No answer. I peek under the door. No light on. Even if he was in the patient ward, he always leaves a light on in his office. Taking one more glance around, I slide the envelope out and open the seam, carefully preventing any obvious signs of tampering so I can seal it back up. On the front is a stamp that states in red, Official Committee Decision. Confidential. Cautiously, I slip the letter out of the envelope, unfold it, and read its contents. One paragraph immediately stands out. On behalf of the General Counsel, termination of patient number 878 has been approved due to an incurable infection and exceeded attempts. Procedure must be completed immediately after the delivery of patient number 1024. Termination of patient number 1024 is approved due to expected birth defects. Canisters will be delivered Sunday for both patients. Proceed with excess dosages not to exceed six per affected persons. The letter drops from my hand to the floor and I fall to my knees right after it. Patient number 878 and patient number 1024. I know from staring at the files yesterday. Liam's pairing and the Bream's main baby. A fog enters my mind as I scramble to find reasoning, the logic behind a decision like this. There has to be something. More must have happened after I left. 
But to end a baby's life just because of birth defects is inexcusable. I need to find that file. I try the doorknob on the doctor's office. It's locked. I jiggle it, hoping to knock it loose. No luck. Leaning my forehead against the door, I beg for answers. What can I do? What would Gavin do? I need his help. There has to be a way I can stop this. They can't kill an innocent baby. I stumble to the front desk, feed the document through the printer, and make two copies of the letter. Circles of light block my vision. Nothing makes sense. They're killing a woman only four years older than me and a newborn baby. Because of defects? Because they're not performing the way what Impetus wants them to? Vigilant to put the original letter and envelope as I found them under Dr. Bourdine's door, I fold the copies and hide them deep in my back pocket. Once I leave the clinic, I dash to the thickets, staying close to the shadows, desperately hoping Gavin is still at our spot. As I near the edge of the bushes, voices float to my ears. I quickly duck to the ground, finding cover in the shadows of taller plants in the gardens. He's such a waste now. We needed his genes. It's the same angry voice from the other night. The one I know now is the creepy man, all dressed in grey, who was suspiciously interrogating me. We can still use them. We will merely have to be more creative with how we do it. Is that the doctor? I try to get a better look, but I can only see the outline of darker shadows. The height and the rounded belly. It has to be him. What do you mean by that? We can mix the injections. In fact, we can do it with the next group. No one will notice. There are two we haven't been sure about. We can pair them and use the mixture instead. I'll use new strands combined with his to ensure the same problem doesn't happen twice. Are they talking about us? Are they talking about my level? Silence. I strain to hear more. Then the other's voice elevates to a sickening sweetness. It would be the first time we have perfect pairings across the level. The community will love that. They are talking about us. Precisely. It's a win-win. I'll take care of it. Good. Another pause. Then the voice is so low I can barely detect the words. Have you heard anything about our newest recruit? It's been less than 24 hours. I sedated him last night, and they locked him up not long after. Not all of it has left his system yet. He's a fighter. Which is why we will need him on our side, I suppose. A bright glow suddenly lights the fading afternoon sky and quickly disappears when the tin door slams shut once again. You shouldn't be standing outside having these conversations. You're getting careless. A woman's voice this time. I heard you inside the steel trap. Sorry, the strange man mumbles. Dr. Bourdine remains quiet. You need not to concern yourself with the new recruit. That's my job, she states sternly. Now come back in so we can finish everything up before tomorrow. It's a big day. She says the last part in a fake sing-song manner, clearly impersonating Mr. Pensioletta. The glow breaks across the sky for a few fleeting moments before it's once again followed by the echo of the tin door shutting. I wait a few minutes, still holding my breath, careful to not move until I'm sure everyone has left. Once the stillness is verified, I turn in the opposite direction and run. Before I can get two steps in, I hear a voice call out, Evangeline! My first thought is to keep running and pretend I didn't hear him. If he sees the letter and that it was tampered with, I'm done. He'll know it was me. Banished, if not more severely punished. Evangeline! He repeats. There's no chance to escape now. He knows it's me. I slowly turn around. 
I have to come up with an excuse. My life counts on it. Oh, hi, doctor. How nice of a surprise it is to see you outside of the clinic. I lie. Dr. Bourdin steps closer while his glasses tip down the edge of his nose. What are you doing all the way out here? The office is closed. I scramble to come up with an excuse and then remember my hoodie. Holding it up in my hand for the doctor to see, I say, I forgot this at work yesterday. Since I'm unsure if I will get the chance to work there again, I wanted to grab it before the big day tomorrow. Dr. Bourdin nods. You've done a fine job there, Evangeline. Clearing his throat, he then says, I had you paged to the office today. Oh no. I almost blurt out. When? But luckily catch myself in time. Asking a question on top of the budding reasons to be guilty would be unfortunate timing. He looks doubting of me as it is. Sorry, it's been a busy day spending time with everyone. You know, before tomorrow and all. I stutter too much. He knows where I've been, I'm sure. I must not have been paying much attention to my monitor. Hmm. He doesn't even pretend to be convinced. Well... The nurses were alerted of your remedy levels. Apparently they've been more sporadic lately. We're concerned. The doctor is suddenly leaning in closer. He's trying to see if my eyes have changed color. Hopefully the evening onset makes it too dark to tell. This keeps getting worse. I move my eyes to my wrist monitor as if the whole purpose was to check the time. I apologize, doctor. I don't want to interrupt, but I can't miss out on the last dinner tonight. I hope you understand. Dr. Bourdine leans back on the balls of his feet, putting more inches between us again. Yes, very well then. I shouldn't keep you from dinner. I will, however, be requesting you to come in tomorrow. I would prefer before the ceremony, but since it'll be a busy day as it is, I'll plan on immediately before you get situated in your new arrangement. Okay. I agree much too quickly. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Without waiting on a response from him, I continue my run toward the levels 14 through 17 home. I don't want to give the doctor a chance to doubt me. My appointment tomorrow will be awful. They'll see my eyes. They'll learn they're getting lighter. At least it'll be after they've declared their intention for my future to impetus. Surely they won't change it afterward, no matter what they find. When I return to the home, I sprint to the cafeteria. I'm relieved when I don't see Jacqueline there. She would be the only one that could keep me there when I don't want to be around anyone. I need to think this through in the quiet of my room, where everything from the past two days can be analyzed. I scan my wrist monitor, grab my regularly scheduled pills from the attendant, and head to the food line to select a few pieces of fruit that can be carried back to my room. For the second night in a row, I go straight to my bed with only kicking off my shoes but not changing clothes. I stare at the ceiling trying to process everything I've seen and heard. Everything is getting stranger. The truth is piecing together slowly. Too slowly. I need answers now, before tomorrow, before it can get worse. I reach into my back pocket. The papers from the clinic are tucked away. I consider hiding them, but there's nowhere to hide. All of my items will be automatically moved tomorrow into whatever housing I end up in. I snort at the thought. Now I know no matter what, I'll be paired. I don't know if that was their original plan for me. I don't know who those other two people are, the ones whose futures they altered to cover a mistake. Now it doesn't even matter. They just proved they don't make the decisions when we are 14 like they claim. They can change them at any time. Dr. Bourdin and the gray man and whoever the lady was, they're up to something. We've always let them have control of our lives in exchange for safety and all of our basic needs, not once questioning if there could be a hint of evil intentions. 
but I've seen a glimpse. They terminate people. They can terminate any of us for any reason. Their actions aren't always for our greater good. I have to get the copies of these papers to Gavin. I have to talk to him. I've never needed answers so severely before. Tomorrow, everything was supposed to change. I've known this day was coming for 18 years. However, my world... My world just changed one night too soon. <laughs>